Whew. Man, it is hotter than you know what today. Holy cow, we go from being 40, 50, 60 degrees overnight or something to like warm in the morning, humid, and it's like 92, 93 degrees. Perfect day to weld. Um, I was going to wait for a rain day for this, but I've been hauling with this trailer a couple times and I really wish I had time to do my toolbox, but I'm not going to have time. I did. I did get a really good deal at my steel place. I don't know. You probably can't see it. There's a sheet of eighth inch uh, sheet metal on the truck. It was, you know, left outside, got a little bit of flash rust on it. So you buy it extremely cheap. Um, I got it for like 60 cents a pound. So whatever that equates out to for a, a five foot wide by a 10 foot long sheet of eighth inch. Nothing wrong with it. Doesn't have any waves, deviations or anything. Sometimes you get stuff that's kind of messed up. Anyways, I got to put some stake pockets on this th or uh, some rub rail and some chain spools because I just don't, I don't dig pulling with this trailer without it. Um, I'm trying to debate because these things are pretty far apart. The stake pockets, normally they're like two foot centers. Um, let's walk over to the Junkie Lamar. We're just going to call it the Junkie Lamar because I just don't like how they did things um i don't have i didn't i'm not carrying a tape measure but you'll clearly see here's that sheet steel it's not bad it'll it'll come clean wire wheel in a couple minutes it was like i don't know a third of the price or something see how close these stake pockets are man it's like two foot centers on stake pockets you know i like that that's strong if i had a chain spool in there that's not that big a distance because normally the chain spools i've seen they don't weld them to the trailer they just weld them to the rub rail and it butts up to there um but i don't know if i necessarily love the idea of not welding the chain spool to the trailer if i've got three foot centers um i always thought it was kind of weird they do it on two foot centers but i uh i never really had an issue with you know twisting some some uh, rub rail but on the flip side i don't want to have a failure or an issue with hauling something so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna pre-weld the chain spools to here to the rub rail and you know with this bolted here or, you know if that's welded there i mean i don't know that that flex is right there and i'm not putting much on it we're probably going to weld them to the damn trailer. I was trying not to mess up, you know, all the pinstripe. The stickers here, I need to order another sticker. Because I'm going to put a chain spool there. So I'm going to have to blend paint over to that at least. But I'm going to have to weld them to the trailer. All right. I'm going to try to be as accurate as I can. As accurate as I can without being accurate. I'm not going to measure it. I ain't worried about it. I'm squaring these up here. I like this, the aluminum one. When you're doing stuff like this, the plastic one, I don't know. I feel like it could be off. Not that this is super precise. Anyways, I know my saw cuts pretty good. Their saw cuts pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, oh, let's see. Let's put you guys there. So what I'm going to do is let's mark, let's mark center, that's our center, and let's mark an inch over, okay, and then it'd be okay if I knew how to measure, mm, I didn't mark an inch over, marked an inch and a half over, what did I grab there, All right, let's mark an inch over. It's paying attention more to the camera than anything. And then, oh, that's an inch and a half. All right. Just trying to screw myself up. That's what I did in the first place. I'm so used to grabbing an inch and a half. I keep going directly to inch and a half. All right, 
I marked my center line of where I want it and then I marked an inch and an inch because I've got a two inch pipe that we need to center on that. So there's our two inch pipe centered as close as we can get without being super technical. So let's, uh, let's mark the rest of these. All right, now somebody might ask me in comments, why do I have these sitting on two by fours? Don't two by fours burn? Yes, it's gonna make these two by fours black. What I have done in the past when I have something like this laying across and I go to weld something in the middle of it, this iron will, flex, it'll sag, not flex, it'll sag down in the center there. And I don't like, I don't want it to sag and then try to figure out how I'm gonna push it back up on the uh you know back up on the trailer because i don't have anywhere to clamp you know i'm going to clamp it to the stake pockets but i need that to be you know fairly straight um i'm actually going to go grab a couple more clamps and clamp one behind the camera here and i'm going to clamp this to the two by four to keep it rigid so it doesn't move a whole lot with welding all right now as they say we're cooking on gas What I'm going to do is I'm going to spot weld these and then I'll pull the clamps off and then I might clamp, I don't know, on either side of whichever one I'm welding. We'll just play it by ear. See how she goes. Smell that wood burning. Yum, yum. Alrighty. Fire. All right, I've got everything prepped, ready to go, clamped on. You know, I'll push that in and tack it. I'll probably tack these first, and then I'll tack that. Um, anyways, I don't have the other side ready to go yet, but anyways, let's get her welded up.
have a few more welds to do. Um, I went ahead and figured I'd just close your weld the uh, the stake pockets. Let me get this clamp out of the way here. Maybe one hand it's hard. All right then. I mean, it's really hard. Woo! Hot. Okay, it's more than what it should have been. Um, anyways, just fully welded the top. I fully welded the stake pockets all the way around to the rub rail. Um, I just closure welded. I mean, you know, welded for structure, but I made sure there, or I tried to make sure there wasn't any pinholes around the spools. Um, anyways, that one kind of went wonky. I like got a squiggle on it. I try to make my welds look good. Um, it's hot right now. I am sweating. I don't know if you can see. Oh, you got like weld spatter. Or... Good thing I ordered a new lens for the camera. <laughs> I need to get like some little cover thing because I ruined the lens on my GoPro 8. Um, it's hot. I don't know if you can see how much I'm sweating. I'm trying to weld and trying to see through my sweat. It's dripping in my face. Um, I need to get a rag or something put in between my helmet. It's got this little foam thing, but it's not cutting it. It is, do you see me sweat is dripping? Ugh. Uh, anyways, that's putting rub rail on a trailer that didn't have rub rail. All right, I don't have much battery on this, but I was just gonna show. This is the next day after we did the chain spools. Here's the chain spools that we put on. That's how you use a chain, or that's how I use a chain spool. Some people go, I've seen people run them underneath here and come up and hook, um, but that's typically how we use it. So that eighth inch pipe, ought to be just fine all you're trying to do is keep this rub rail from having a whole lot of torsional load um but anyways that's kind of finished product painted and everything and and machine hauled but there's you know there's the chain spool so we'll be able to see if it's going to start doing anything i would think it'd start denting the tubing um but like i said you're just trying to keep torsional load off of it i almost put square tubing in it just for a different look I thought that'd be kind of cool. You know, quarter inch has some rounded edges. Um, I had some. I just, I don't know, I went for typical, you know, just typical what people use as chain spools. Um, anyways, I figured I'd show that. I'll put that in part of the video. So, anyways, hope you like the uh, adding the rub rail.